Hello and welcome to a new way to museum at the Sternberg Museum. I am Alicia Gady and I am the naturalist here at the museum. So that just means I take care of all of our animals that we have here. So it's a very exciting job. Um, so today we are going to talk about insects as they escape here. So we are going to talk about insect life cycles. So we have insects here mainly as a food for the rest of our animals, but we do have some that we like to take to programs for kids, um, just to really introduce them to insects at a young age so that we realize they are not this creepy crawly creature that we need to squish every time we see, that they are actually pretty awesome and they do serve a purpose. So to start off, I am going to show you um, an insect that has a complete life cycle. So when I say complete life cycle, <coughs> that means that they have, um, they have an egg to start off with, and then they have a larva state. So this is a mealworm. So they have the larva state, and then they have a pupa state, and then they turn into an adult. So in this case, we're turning into beetles. So they have all of those stages, whereas if you have an incomplete life cycle, you are pretty much missing the pupa stage. You have an egg, and you have a larva, or a um, naiad, or a nymph, but you do not have any difference in looking. So we will look at that later, but right now we are going to look at mealworms. So we have two kinds of mealworms here. We have these small ones called just regular mealworms. These are the ones that we use for food around here. So they start off as an egg and then they will, if I can grab one of these tiny ones, they will grow and they will start off super tiny almost so you can't see them and then they will just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually they decide to turn into a pupa. So the pupa obviously looks really weird. Um, it can't really move all that well. It's not eating or anything. And then after the pupa stage, as all my mealworms escape, we get beetles. So the only purpose of life for these beetles is to reproduce. So they're not gonna live very long. Once they hit the beetle stage, they're only gonna live for about a week or two. Um, they're going to reproduce, they're gonna find a mate, and they're gonna lay their eggs, and then they're going to die. So we don't feed the beetles off. We only have them for making us more mealworms, which is what we feed off. And we have a whole system. We probably have thousands and thousands of mealworms. So if you're afraid of mealworms, you'd definitely be afraid of my back room. They are everywhere. So even though those guys are food, we do have these things called superworms. So oops. they are mealworms, except for they are just a lot bigger. So we can compare the size right there. So that's a regular mealworm, and this is a superworm. So superworms are really cool. Um, they have the same life cycle as a regular mealworm. They have the eggs, tiny little larvae that get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then eventually they will turn into a pupa and a beetle. So I do not have any pupa to show you of these guys because there is one big difference between superworms and mealworms, and that is if superworms have beetles in the same cage as these big adults, they will stop turning into beetles. They will just stay in their forever uh, larva state. So when we have these guys backstage, we have these beautiful beetles. So they mate, they lay their eggs, and then it takes a little bit for them to hatch and grow up big. But when they grow up big, if the beetles and the larvae are living in the same cage, the larvas will not turn into beetles. So whether it be that it's overcrowded, they don't want to compete for the same food source, but they don't do that. So if we want to continue to have these guys, we actually move them to a separate cage. And so we don't do that very frequently because we don't really feed off the superworms all that much, mainly because they are so fatty. So if we feed them to our animals, our animals get fat. So, and as I have mealworms escaping. But they are really cool to take to programs because they are really big insects. So kids love them. They don't bite or anything. They really just eat um, fruits and veggies as well as chicken feed and stuff like that. So they're pretty cool. All right. So get these guys back in there. Right now, none of mine have pupa because they just all made it and had babies. So I'm going to put those guys away. So this was a <coughs> complete life cycle. So they have all of those four stages, kind of like you would think as a butterfly has. 
Um, so now we are going to look at a incomplete. So incomplete is very simple. If you're thinking in terms of things like crickets, so I'm going to pour these guys out into our little cage here so that they don't hop away. So we have crickets here. And as you can see, we have these really big crickets in the back. We have a male and a female. And then you have this little one right here. So when you have the incomplete life cycle, you just have an egg and then you have a nymph. So a nymph looks just like the adult version, just a lot smaller, not capable of breeding yet. Um, they're going to molt multiple times until they're old enough to breed, at which point they'll typically get wings and they'll start calling for mates. And the females can lay 100 to 200 eggs in their lifetime, and it's a very short lifetime. It's only about a month or two months. So again, their only purpose in life is to breed as well. And so when we let them breed, they breed in these little jars. Obviously, the lid's not going to be on it. Um, they just bury down, and they lay little eggs in there. And you can see them. And then after about 14 days, they will hatch. So. We put one of these in the cage, all the females are going to start uh, laying their eggs in there. And then after 14 days, we take it out and we put it into a little nursery that's really warm and all of the little crickets are going to eventually hop out and they're going to start their wonderful life cycle and getting bigger. So we obviously use crickets here to feed a lot of our amphibians and lizards and stuff. Um, but we always want to make sure that we keep a steady supply of them. So a lot of work does go into making sure that we are breeding them properly, that they're staying healthy. So even though they are food, we like to make sure that they're nice and healthy. Otherwise, we won't have them anymore. And crickets are always fun. They're nice and it's never quiet in my room. So that's always wonderful. I don't have to listen to my own thoughts. So we do have um, one of my favorite insects here at the museum that we do not use for food. We only use to show people. And these are our hissing cockroaches. Let's see if I can get them off. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if we're capable of hearing that them hissing. They get handled a lot, so they're pretty used to um, people touching them. So really, they only hiss if they're scared trying to tell you to go away, or if they're trying to attract a mate, they will hiss, or if they're trying to tell other males to get away, this is my territory, and whatnot. So these are Madagascar hissing cockroaches. So these are two adults I have. So one of them is a male. So it's really cool about these guys that they can hang on for dear life. So this one is a male. He actually has horns. So not like you would think of typically, but there's little bumps on the top of his head, and that's how we know he is a male. He will actually use those to fight off other males um, and compete for mates. So, and then this is a female. So as you can tell, she really doesn't, she's being pretty chill right now. She doesn't have those horns. Um, she's gonna get a lot bigger. She's actually not full grown. She'll probably get another that much bigger. So what's really cool about these guys is that I told you about how they are laying eggs. So that is called, um, they are oviparous. So when you think of humans, we are viviparous, so we um, have babies, we grow them ourselves, all mammals do, and then we give live birth. Um, insects, you're typically thinking of them as the oviparous. They have eggs, they lay them, they hatch, not a whole lot of parental care going on. So hissing cockroaches are actually ovoviparous, so it's really cool because she still has eggs, but she keeps them inside of her. They're going to hatch inside of her. She will actually give live birth. So it's not really the same as humans because we are nurturing our babies, where she's not really nurturing them, she's just carrying them with her. And when they are born, I actually have a picture. When they are born, they just come out, excuse me, of her back end. And there's, she can have anywhere from 30 to 60 babies, and they come out white because their exoskeleton isn't hard yet. And the first time I saw this, I freaked out. Nobody told me about it when I started my job here. I thought she was dying. I thought she had parasites or something. <laughs> but nope, that's the way it's supposed to be. So it's really cool. Um, that makes her very special. What else makes them really special is that where most of our insects have short lifespans, like in the few months and whatnot. These guys can live for a couple years. 
So we do have quite a few of them. If I marked them, I could probably name them because they will be around with us for a while. So they are really awesome. And lots of people actually like having these guys as pets because they're pretty easy to take care of. They just want somewhere to hide, lay their eggs, and not lay their eggs, have their babies, um, and you know, really just live with each other. The females are great living together. Why are you, why are you trying to climb up him? Very silly. And I have had lots of people ask if they could take our hissing cockroaches home as pets, so. And then another favorite we have here is our walking sticks. So we actually have walking sticks here in Kansas. Um, obviously, you have to really go out and search for them because they do look like sticks, and they're a little bit smaller than these guys because these are Vietnamese walking sticks. So let's see if I can get one out. So they're so cool. Come on. They're so easy to take care of. They just want rotted food. There we go. Want to walk? So they are really cool. They really do look like sticks. Um, some of ours are green, just kind of really depending on where we want to keep them and if they're going to blend in better being brown or green. So walking sticks are super cool as well because this is actually a female. So I just know it's a female because males are really rare in the Vietnamese walking sticks. So they are actually asexual. So they don't need a mate to reproduce. So she is just going to, um, make babies herself. She's going to drop them in the dirt anywhere and they're going to hatch within a couple weeks. And they start off really tiny, very green, um, and then they just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And this isn't even a full grown one, so she can still get way bigger. Um, and then about after five months, she will die herself. So, but what's really awesome about these guys is they like to eat dead things. So if you have a dead tree in your yard or all the leaves that are falling, during fall that people may not rake up. Those are all decomposing and getting gross, and these guys like to eat that. So they're really great at getting rid of stuff that we don't want around us. So it's wonderful. Um, they're very cool, they can't bite you. People think that they have little creepy faces. They like to climb all over people. There we go. So yes, I love these guys. They can lose their legs on occasion. They're very easy to pull off, but they're fine. And they really do just look like little sticks. And they do have six legs, but sometimes people think that these front ones are the antenna. But nope, they are all six legs. So that is pretty much all of the insects that we have around here um, that we like to take care of and um, take to programs and stuff like that. So they all kind of have different reproductive life cycles. And I think that makes it really cool because we get to explain to people that insects can have live birth and insects may not need mates. So, and they're not all just creepy crawly. They're pretty awesome. So that is all I have today, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for joining us in A New Way to Museum with the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. If you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for notifications when we release a new video. Support us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. You can also follow us on all our social media. Links are found in the description. Thanks for watching, and follow your curiosity to new discoveries.